there's another component that the, the fighters have to contend with, obviously, and that is the mat, my friend, isn't it, Sebastian? Oh, yeah, absolutely. That is where we have at times seen uh, Wilson Varela struggle a little bit. It has been when he's taken down, but you can't really count him out because as soon as he does find his rhythm on the feet, he's really, really dangerous. I mean, one fight that stands out to me is when he fought the Brit, James Dixon, and Varela was down two rounds. He was taken down repeatedly, controlled up against the cage. He was eating shots. He was all but counted out, you know, even as the third round was elapsing. But towards the end of the third round, he got back to his feet and just started landing haymaker after haymaker. So he's a very athletic guy. He has very fast hands, you know, he's good at finding the target, you know, generally pretty accurate as well. And I think that's why we're seeing Bojack being a little bit tentative. He doesn't want to rush into anything against an accurate striker like Varela. Well, for the moment, the distance is maintained. An observation phase, if you will, going for the low kick there as well. The striker, you just get a sense of how much power he's keeping in that leg. Oh, the front kick there as well for the post, man. That's an express delivery indeed. <laughs> And Bojack, he's, I mean, he's also a striker at heart as well. He began training boxing, but then he switched to MMA at around age 18 because he's quoted as saying boxing was not enough. And he actually began training boxing because he was being a little, you know, he had trouble with some bullies. And I'm, something tells me those bullies stopped giving him problems shortly after that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they, they, they went to find someone else, indeed. But that's often a, a common story as well that you hear. In fact, sitting right next to us, we have Lucie Berteau, the, the French color commentator for our French counterparts. And her story is similar. She's, been a, she's become a, a boxing legend, now MMA fighter as well. But her story began as well with a bullying at school. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, uh, that, that was the infancy of her story. So that seems to be a common trend indeed about some of the fighters all around the world. Well, you know what they say, you know what they say about pressure, right? It creates diamonds. And yeah, MMA is, there's so many stories. Just look at Georges St. Pierre, one of the examples as well. Oh, look at that. Oh, there you have it. Just grabbing that leg and taking the opponent down. And Varela having to contend with the impact there as well, trying to find a way out. Well, that was a nice, very nice reaction there from Bojack because I think he was starting to feel a little bit frustrated, not really accomplishing what he wanted to on the feet. But, he, you know, I, as I've said, he was a striker, but so was Nico Kovacic, who got the job done. And guess what? Uh, Bojack's first ever MMA win was via submission as well. So, you know, you've got to be able to do it all if you're going to compete in a high level, as, as for example, at such a high level as Hexagon MMA. I'm talking about the, 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 you know, the, we always say, oh, he's a, he, obviously the striking background is impressive, etc. And like you mentioned, all those stories where you have someone going for the striking capability, but then finding the, uh, the possibility to win via submission as well. It just has to add to the skill set. The panel has to be extremely wide. And we're setting ourselves up here in the uh, corner area of the cage. Varela back up against the cage. Not the best position to be in, is it, Sebastian? Well, not necessarily, but if he manages to get his left arm free he could use the cage to wall walk but you see Brojack he's kind of recognizing that he's got he's hooking his opponent's legs together and he's trying to make sure that Varela doesn't have a base to push off of and then he can use the cage to get back up Brojack you know he's credited sort of his well-roundedness as an MMA fighter to his training partner former KSW champion Sebastian Prisibus uh, since training with him, the project has said, and I quote, I've been able to adapt. Now I can fight on the ground, standing, or in any position. And that seems to be the case here tonight. It seems he does have that uh, adaptability, certainly, that he might have been lacking previously in his career. Again, both fighters trying to snap their losing streak. Uh, two for the postman, Brojak, three for Varela. And Varela now changing positions up against the cage, still less of his back against the cage right now. As he's trying to l just latch over there with that left arm and try to find a way to strike his opponent's face with his right fist. And interestingly enough, Varela, while he is billed as a striker, and that's, you know, that's fair as well, his background is actually also in Sambo, and he was, wrestling was his strength, but he took a break. Uh, he took a break from MMA in 2016 because he felt that he, you know, he needed to sharpen up his, his, uh, his striking, so he took 30-plus kickboxing fights to just sort of improve on that aspect specifically. Uh, certainly uh, generated a, a large number of victories in the, in the, on the kickboxing scene as well. And again, just the, uh, just the way the story unfolded in round number one here. We looked like we were gearing up for a striking festival of sorts, and then it quickly moved to the mat. And since then, both fighters have been uh, trying to find an answer here tonight. 
the thing is with a lot of wrestlers who are usually not as comfortable off of her back and we've seen Rivarella struggling a little bit to improve his position I mean sure heel, heel to the thigh it's not comfortable but it's hardly a fight ending strike from the bottom of the Karech Kaita later on tonight for the championship of the world. But that's a story for later on. Oh. Inside leg kick there from Jack. Yeah, both of the uh, both of the fighters there delivering spectacular leg kicks. We saw that in the early early segments of round number one. And rebuilding on that in the start of round number two. generally does have very good cardio sometimes being taken down and carrying your opponent's weight it can really zap the energy but he does not look the slightest bit fatigued here in the second round oh. nice and, and Varela he also has a good lead lift hook we did see a little bit of that there and that is also a good deterrence for so you're just showing your opponent sure you can shoot in you can try and short that short but if you do yeah. I'm going to be there to welcome you. The rifle is cocked and ready to rock. That is it. Nice attempt there from Varela. Instantly protecting the face as he spins around. Oh, there you have it. Oh, going there straight for the takedown. And I think that, that push kick hurt Rojak. And look, we're seeing a similar situation. Another guillotine attempt off of a strike to the body. Well, there it is, locked and loaded, like you were saying, Wilson Varela. Making oh, the oh. <laughs> and there we have oh, it. Oh my goodness! Another guillotine finish off of a body strike, and it wasn't it wasn't push kick, a teeth.